standards addressing discrimination against individuals with disabilities. Third was to ensure that the federal government played a central role in enforcing the standards that the Act established on behalf of individual disabilities, and last, to evoke the sweep of congressional authority. Some of us think it's not as much as it used to be, but I think there is a lot of authority in Congress, including the power to enforce the 14th Amendment and to regulate commerce in order to address the major areas of discrimination faced day to day by people with disabilities. The Act's five titles each relate to areas of everyday life and are designed, as I said, to prohibit discrimination. The first title, Unemployment, indicates that employers may not discriminate against an individual with disability in hiring or promotion if the individual is otherwise qualified for the job. Employers can ask about one's ability to perform a job, but cannot inquire if that individual has a disability. Employers must provide, quote, reasonable accommodation, an interesting term, such as job restructuring and modification of equipment when necessary. Title II on public services indicates that state and local governments must remove communication and physical barriers that restrict people with disabilities from using their services and activities. Public entities are required to make every effort to integrate the disabled into their existing and future services, programs, and activities, and be able to communicate with all of the public, provide for the public's use of the facilities, and allow access to programs that provide state or local government services and benefits. Title III on public accommodations requires that restaurants, hotels, theaters, and a myriad list of other public uh, opportunities and programs may not discriminate on the basis of disability. Private clubs and religious organizations were exempted under the Act. Auxiliary aids and services must be provided to individuals with disabilities. Title V on telecommunications required that telephone companies provide telephone relay services for the hearing impaired and speech impaired 24 hours a day. And finally, a miscellaneous provision prohibited coercing or threatening or retaliating against the disabled or those attempting to aid people with disabilities in asserting their rights. When I looked at the major impact, one of the major impacts of this preeminent civil rights legislation has been a proliferation of legal battles, legal decisions, and uh, agreements between adjudicating parties, which continues to this day. So for example, just yesterday, the Department of Justice announced the settlement of a case in the U.S. District Court for the District of Nebraska with a Quick Trip Corporation to remedy accessibility issues at their 500 plus gasoline stations. You just have to go a block and a half from here to one of their stations and see the difficulties that an individual with a disability would have being able to pay for the service and use their equipment. So it will affect all of us. Perhaps ongoing litigation is not surprising. Uh, there are still continuing legal battles going on on the interpretation of the Constitution of the United States. So it's an, going to be an ongoing event. So what has been accomplished over the last 20 years? Has our society been transformed? My answer is an unequivocal yes. One cannot participate in daily life without experiencing evidences of the changes. Individuals with disabilities are now more and more a visible and vibrant part of our society. Accommodations to increase accessibility are more commonplace in work, school, and public environments. The 2007 report of the National Council on Disability indicated many of these same things. Quote, I quote, as consumers, Americans with disabilities have greater access to goods and services from businesses, state and local governments, and their local communities. Service animals for people with vision and other impairments are more accepted than ever before. In addition, greater availability of relatively inexpensive assistive technology has helped people with vision and hearing impairments 
overcome information and communication barriers to all forms of community participation. As workers, people with disabilities are likely to receive accommodations and less likely to be terminated due to their disabilities. The Great Plains ADA Center indicated many other numerous positive benefits. A majority of people with disabilities surveyed by a Harris poll perceive significant improvements in public facility access and public attitudes. Public transportation systems in the United States have made significant progress in becoming more accessible, especially to wheelchair users. A significant number of curb ramps have been installed and sidewalks have been made more accessible in many areas. People with physical disabilities have seen steady, though inconsistent, progress in access to public accommodations. People with sensory or communication disabilities were unfortunately less likely to report experiencing progress in access to public accommodations. The percentage of Americans with disabilities voting in 2008 increased dramatically from prior years. And the education gap between people with disabilities and with people without disabilities is shrinking. And people with disabilities are attending post-secondary institutions in greater numbers. Many employees with disabilities are experiencing less discrimination on the job. I thought what I would do is share some comments from fellow Nebraskans with disabilities on the impact of the ADA on their lives. Kathy Howell from the State Independent Living Council stated, quote, I became disabled in 1982, and I woke up from a coma to find out I was a second-class citizen. I could not go anywhere or do anything. I was an RN, and I lost my license because I was disabled. To me, the ADA means I have my civil rights and liberties back. I'm a real person just like everybody else. Tim Kolb, for the Foundation of Disability Education and a colleague of mine from the Nebraska Developmental Disabilities Council stated, the Title II of the ADA provides that a person with a disability has the right to care, quote, in the most integrated setting appropriate to the needs of the individual. Now this is a part of the ADA is there for people like me who wish to live and not just survive. This is, most certainly, a precious provision of the ADA worthy of great celebration on the occasion of the ADA's 20th anniversary in AD 2010. And Nancy Erickson, an associate minister at the First, First Plymouth Congregational Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, stated that the biggest change in my life took place in my ability to travel as soon as the rules and regulations took effect, I was able to fly anywhere and get transportation from the airport to my destination. This opened up many more options for me. Also, when I took a cruise, I was able to take part in many of the side trips because the company was forced by law to make them accessible. Generally speaking, I'm now able to be more active and engaged in the world around me. All wonderful things. What remains to be done? Well, people with visible and severe disabilities continue to experience discrimination in hiring. The unemployment percentages for individuals with disabilities remain unacceptably high. There unfortunately is no clear evidence that Americans with disabilities are becoming economically self-sufficient. Private transportation companies lag behind in providing accessible services. People in rural areas continue to be underserved by public transportation and as a result participate less in all aspects of community living. According to government statistics between October 2001 and February 2008, more than 30,000 veterans returned home with service-related disabilities, including amputations, burns, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and traumatic brain injuries. Despite the amendments to the ADA in 2008, significant disparities still exist 
between the designation of a, quote, disabled veteran by the Department of Veterans Affairs and the qualification of that veteran for protection under the ADA. There is an absence of systematic, ongoing data collection about the ADA, and the result is still significant language gaps about the impact it's had on our society. In summary, the ADA, while not a panacea, has benefited all of us in ways both simple and profound. Computer screen technology developed for people with visual impairments is also helpful to students and adults using English, learning English as a second language, as is closed captioning on TV. In fact, closed captioning helps all of us, catching headlines while we're in a busy airport or following the Husker games in a very loud sports bar. I had to get in Nebraska. Speech recognition software, originally designated for people unable to use keyboards, is now used by many cell phones and other handheld devices, and for many of us are just very poor typists. Bluetooth technology helps not only individuals with limited mo mobility use a cell phone, it helps us all keep our eyes on the road. As Americans, uh, as an older Americans, pardon me, as they became less mobile. The ADA has increased accessibility, expanded opportunity, and allowed us to participate more in our society. On the 20th anniversary of the ADA, I'm reminded that disability is a natural part of life. And as we age, more and more of us will come to appreciate the wisdom of the writers of the ADA. Thank you very much. Because the company was forced by law to make them accessible. Generally speaking, I'm now able to be more active and engaged in the world around me. All wonderful things. What remains to be done? Well, people with visible and severe disabilities continue to experience discrimination in hiring. The unemployment percentages for individuals with disabilities remain unacceptably high. There unfortunately is no clear evidence that Americans with disabilities are becoming economically self-sufficient. Private transportation companies lag behind in providing accessible services. People in rural areas continue to be underserved by public transportation and as a result participate less in all aspects of community living. According to government statistics, between October 2001 and February 2008, more than 30,000 veterans returned home with service-related disabilities, including amputations, burns, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and traumatic brain injuries. Despite the amendments to the ADA in 2008, significant disparities still exist between the designation of a, quote, disabled veteran by the Department of Veterans Affairs and the qualification of that veteran for protection under the ADA. There is an absence of systematic, ongoing data collection about the ADA, and the result is still significant language gaps about the impact it's had on our society. In summary, the ADA, while not a panacea, has benefited all of us in ways both simple and profound. Computer screen technology developed for people with visual impairments is also helpful to students and adults using English, learning English as a second language, as is closed captioning on TV. In fact, closed captioning helps all of us, catching headlines while we're in a busy airport or following the Husker games in a very loud sports bar. I had to get in Nebraska. Speech recognition software, originally designated for people unable to use keyboards, is now used by many cell phones and other handheld devices, and for many of us are just very poor typists. Bluetooth technology helps not only individuals with limited mo mobility use a cell phone, it helps us all keep our eyes on the road. As Americans, uh, as an older Americans, pardon me, as they became less mobile, 
the ADA has increased accessibility, expanded opportunity, and allowed us to participate more in our society. On the 20th anniversary of the ADA, I'm reminded that disability is a natural part of life. And as we age, more and more of us will come to appreciate the wisdom of the writers of the ADA. Thank you very much.